much, Bill. Um, the Kalam argument seems to depend to some extent on the existence of an agent or an unembodied mind. Um, well, it doesn't depend on it. It leads to it. As well, I said, it doesn't okay. presuppose it. It's an argument for that. Go ahead. Sure. So it, pre pre it leads to it. I accept that. But um, some people I've spoken to believe there is no such thing as a mind, yeah. let alone an unembodied mind. So do you think we need to use an argument like the one from intentionality to complement the Kalam, or are there other ways that we could respond? We don't need to, but obviously the argument from intentionality would be a very powerful auxiliary argument, wouldn't it? Because if there are finite minds, that makes all the more intelligible the existence of a cosmic mind. But it's not necessary, as I say, this argument leads to or shows the existence of a cosmic mind. And all you need to do to defend that is to answer any objections against it that the unbeliever or materialist might bring. But then you see the burden of proof is on him, not on you. You have given an argument for an unembodied cosmic mind. If he's got an objection, he's got to bear the burden of proof to show that that's somehow impossible or incoherent. Right. You could possibly.